Okay, we're rolling. We're I'll... rolling, Halsey. Pay attention. All right, here we go. What's up, guys? Nate and Sutton back with another video, and today we're coming for all of our new parents out there. It's a hard time in life. It's, it's a... a good time, but it's hard. Yes, very true, because I'm telling you what, if you know your baby's not sleeping, you know you're living the hard life. <laughs> All right, this is Baby Halston, everybody. Say, hey, Baby Halston. He's so cute and chubby. Look at him. I sleep all the way through the night and make my parents really happy. And we're here to hopefully help you make it easier. Yeah, so we quickly discovered after having our two boys, this is Halston, our second one. He's a little over three months old right now, that sleep is essential. Your baby sleeping is directly correlated with the happiness that you're experiencing in your life. And directly correlated with your sleep. If they're not sleeping, you're not sleeping. <laughs> yeah, so we thought it was very important. We wanted to, we've wanted we been wanting to make this video ever since Oakland was two months old because we felt like we have discovered the secret on how to get your baby to sleep through the night. And just as a disclaimer, before we get into all the details of this video, we got to make the disclaimer that there's many ways to get your babies to sleep through the night, I'm sure. But this has worked amazing, not only for us, but for so many of our friends and family, people that we know. There is a method to this, and we're gonna give you that method. At two months old, Oakland, our oldest, he's now almost two years old, he was sleeping 12 hours through the night, and then now Halston, at two months old, he was sleeping at 12 hours through the night. He just threw up all over me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh, we haven't figured out the solution to throwing up yet. Man. If you could figure that out, let me know. Oh my goodness, that's why I brought this rag in here. So Halston's a little over three months old right now, but ever since he was two months old, he was sleeping 12 hours through the night. Yeah, and that's really something. I see moms all the time on Instagram posting like, my baby's up all night, does anyone have any suggestions? Or they're like talking about their nighttime feedings, and I'm like, wow. You guys live in the hard life and their babies are like nine months old, so. We're here to help you get it get it right from the beginning so you can get your sleep and be the best parents you can be. Yes. So, how did we do it? How did we get both of our boys at two months old to sleep through the night? Well, what was the biggest thing you would say that we did? A schedule. Babies love routine and they learn it. So, as if you keep doing the same thing over and over, they start to understand what is happening when. And it eliminates a lot of crying. Yeah, and schedules work really well for parents who are on a schedule. If you're it's like totally us. Yeah, which is totally <laughs> us. If you are like all over the place and you don't even know what your days are looking like, the schedule might not work the best for you. But if you are living the routine life, we <laughs> I tell you what. Yeah, so a schedule is huge. Doing the same thing every day at the same time, your baby will love that. Variety is the spice of life, but I'm telling you, when you have a newborn, your ultimate goal in life is to get them to sleep, and a schedule will do that. Yeah, we love to sleep, so we're like, what can we do? Yeah, so <laughs> we'll, we'll touch on that in a little more detail at the end of this video. So now we're going to go into some tips to help you guys get your baby to sleep through the night. One of the tips is to have a wake time for your baby during the day. A lot of newborns like to sleep all day, and they will if you let them. They'll just sleep and sleep, and you just wake them up to feed them, but you need to wake them up. They need to be awake a certain amount of time during the day so they can get out their energy and sleep better at night and, and for their naps. And speaking of getting out energy, one of our favorite ways that we were able to let them get out their energy is tummy time. It's not my favorite way. It's hard to watch. Yeah, it, it's a, they don't like that. Yeah, a lot of parents have a hard time doing this because their most babies don't like being put on their stomach. They will cry and cry, but it's so good for them. It helps strengthen their neck muscles it helps them move around get a lot of energy out you just have to do it for just like 10 minutes not much yeah it really helps them learn how to hold their head up so tip number two is letting them get hungry for the last meal of the day how do you do that how do you make them hungry the last meal of the day well one of the best things that you can do is make sure you're not like giving them snacks or like cluster feeding right before nighttime. You want them to be hungry for that last meal, so make sure there's a, at least a few hours between their last meal and the previous feeding so they're really hungry, they're gonna be satiated that last meal and sleep through the night. Okay, so those were some daytime tips. Now we're gonna go into some nighttime tips, which I think are the most important, because that's what we're trying to do, is get them to sleep through the night. 
The first thing is creating a good sleep environment. You want your room to be total darkness, no night lights, nothing stimulating. No, we have nothing in the crib, no like mobile hanging above the crib, no toys, no blankets, just boring. Because that's the idea is you want them to associate their crib with sleeping, not playing, not playing with their blanket or anything. Just you, they're in the crib, they go to sleep. All right, next thing is when your baby's a newborn and they're still waking up in the night to feed, you want to get out of the sleep environment for the feeding time. So when you go in their room or if they're in your room, you want to turn the light on, you want to turn the white noise off because you don't want them to associate feeding with sleeping. It's like time to feed. So you stimulate them with the lights, feed them, and then when it's time to go back to sleep, put them back in the crib, lights off, sound machine back on. All right, another big tip is to put your baby in the crib while they're awake so when they're putting when you're putting them to bed to go to sleep you want to lay them down when they're awake not fully awake not like wide-eyed but like in that sleepy state where their eyes are like open and closing really slow they're tired so you know they're about to fall asleep put them in there so that way they'll fall asleep on their own and then eventually you'll lead up to the point where you're putting them in there fully awake fully alert like with oakland we are like playing with him, making him crack up laughing, running around his room right before we put him in his crib and he's still fine and he goes right to sleep. Because if you don't do that, if you rock your baby to sleep and then put them in their crib, you are training them to need you to fall asleep and that's not what you want. You want them to be able to fall asleep on their own. And I know it's such sweet moments to rock your baby to sleep, I know, but if you want sleep, you gotta put him in there awake, you gotta do it. Another thing that's very important when... He's passionate about this one. Yeah, is when <laughs> your baby starts crying, never go in there. I don't care if they're one day old or they're two weeks old. Let them cry it out for hours and hours and hours. <laughs> you bet people are pausing and scrolling down commenting right now. I hope you would say you're joking. I'm just joking. There is some truth to that, but not to that extreme. When your baby starts crying, it's, you know... A mother's intuition, a parent's intuition to run in there and And save the day, save the day, soothe them, make sure everything's okay. But it's, you're only hindering them by doing that. And we're not saying don't go in there at all. Yeah, we're not saying don't go in there at all, but you set a time, a time limit. So there's an age limit where you start letting them cry when you don't respond immediately. I think it's about 12 weeks where you do, you start with five, five, five. So it's five minutes five minutes, five minutes in between the crying. So when they cry, you go in their room, you don't turn on the light, you don't make eye contact with them because that's stimulating, you don't talk to them, you just put their hand, your hand on their chest, pat their chest, just let them know like you're still here, you didn't go anywhere, and then leave the room. Start the timer again if they start crying for five minutes. And it is so hard. It is so hard to not go in there because all you want to do is go help them. But you're hindering yourself and you're hindering them if you do it. If you respond immediately, you're just... Look at his bald spot. <laughs> if you do it immediately, you're just messing you both up. So you got to you gotta do it. If it means putting in your headphones, do that. If it means putting in earplugs, do that. Okay, so the next tip is letting them sleep as long as the doctor says it's okay. So... A lot of people think, and you'll even read about this online, where it's like, oh, you can only let your baby go three hours or four hours without feedings throughout the night. But as long as they're gaining weight and they're healthy and the doctor says it's okay, like our doctor, you know, he, he was gaining weight week after week, but he just wanted to keep sleeping through the night. But we were waking him up, which is just crazy. He, I know it was the hardest thing. Like, he's sleeping and all I want to do is sleep. I'm like, well, I gotta wake him up. Yeah, but if your doctor says it's okay for him to keep sleeping, he's gaining weight, he's looking healthy, she, he, then let him sleep. Earlier in this video, I mentioned that uh, how important a schedule is. Well, what kind of schedule, you might be asking? How do I know what my schedule is? And that's what we were like. When we had Oakland, we weren't really sure where to begin. And that is where a book saved the day. If you guys follow us, you know we talk about this book all the time, and I will... I will preach about this book probably till the day I die because it's been so helpful. And the book is Moms on Call. This book is incredible. We tell everyone we know about it. We were going to make a video about this regardless, but we reached out to Moms on Call and asked them like, hey guys, we love your book. We said we love your book. It's helped us so much. Is there anything that you can do for our subscribers? 
and they said that they would offer us a discount code for our followers, a 20% discount code on all their courses, which is really cool because- We didn't the, know there was courses. I know, so we all we went off of was these books. They have the zero to six months, the six to 15 months, and the 15 months to four years old. And it covers way more than a schedule. It's like everything you need to know, how to give a bath, how to wash their hair, what do you do if their nose is running? What do you do if they have a fever? Like literally everything that comes with being parents is in that book. If you don't know what to do, which was us, just get the book. Yeah, so these books have been amazing for us. And we ha we have a, we'll put a link down in the description below so you can go and check them out if you're interested. Um, but if you're more, if you're less of a reader and more of like a visual type of video person like I am, you might find the courses really helpful. And the courses go into even more depth than the books and they but they go hand in hand originally when we were getting it i was a little nervous i'm like i don't really like to read like non-fiction factual books i don't know how i'm going to read this book but it's not set up like a book that you have to read the whole thing there's a table of contents and it tells you every single thing so we're like okay we're about to give him his first bath what do we do and you're like in the front it says bathing and so you flip to that page like you it's not really a book that you read through it's kind of just like a manual that you you know find what you need and look at look for it in there yeah so this has been in the schedule they tell you exactly what to do every hour of the day every at every stage of their life from one week old to four years old if you're interested go check out the link below you can find them on there and find their courses the our code nate and sutton is 20 percent off on only the courses but the link below will give you all the access to all of their books and courses and everything and i know you guys want to see more of our kids but this is why we don't do videos with them it's because we get thrown up on a million times. <laughs> it is challenging to do videos with little babies and toddlers, I tell you. Yeah, it's very hard. But anyway, that's it for now. That is how we have been able to get our kids to sleep through the night. It's been a game changer. I hope those tips helped y'all and that you get better night's sleep because of it. Yes, everyone loves to sleep.